Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Starfield, as I'm sure you know, is Bethesda's latest modding framework, and as per usual, performance near release has been abysmal. Despite this, I've played every second of my save file on the Steam Deck, and today I'm going to share my findings so you can enjoy your playthrough as well. First up is the news. I mentioned it in my last video, but I'm back in the US, and now I even have a real editing station. I just wanted to take this section to ask you for your help. First, I'll be rapidly iterating on my setup here, so please let me know if you have any problems with the videos, and hopefully I can address them quickly. Secondly, I'd like to ask you to consider my Patreon if you enjoy the content. Since moving back to the US, I've started doing content creation almost full time, and Patreon is what helps me be very strict about which content I make and which sponsors I accept. It also gets you some cool benefits, like behind the scenes content, content polls, ad free viewing, a patron only section in the Discord, and even a custom Steam Deck boot animation. Thank you for your consideration, and back to the regularly scheduled programming. Before getting into the benchmarks, let's go over the testing methodology. All testing was done on two Steam Decks running the SteamOS Beta 3.5.1. Version 3.5 was chosen rather than the Stable Channels 3.4 because of the much better CPU performance. The first deck used for most of the testing was running on BIOS version 118. The second deck used for overclock testing was running BIOS version 116. Both decks used the following versions of software. Proton Experimental 8.0-2023-10.10, Mesa 23.3.0-Devel, and VKD3D 2.10.0. My overclocked Steam Deck is at 4GHz on the CPU, 2GHz on the GPU, and running at 20 watts. It is also fitted with a PTM7950 pad and the JSOX vented backplate, so keep that in mind when comparing to my overclocking results. Also, a quick note about overclocking on SteamOS 3.5 and the new BIOS revisions. I am aware that my overclocking process no longer works, and I'm currently testing a new way to do so. This video has results using the new process, but I'm not ready to share it yet. I would expect a video about it relatively soon. Regarding the testing itself though, the primary testing location is the new Atlantis Spaceport District, since it has a little bit of everything but I've also checked the following locations thoroughly. The introduction and tutorial mission on Crete, Cydonia on Mars, the dogfights in the List 4 Families mission, and a dense forest planet. The New Atlantis spaceport has elements of each of these locations, namely large sight lines, some vegetation and complex geometry, particle effects during ship takeoff, and large amounts of AI to hit the CPU hard. The exact route was loading in next to my ship, then walking through the UC checkpoint, up the stairs, walk by the bar, and then end by the tram, which takes approximately 60 seconds. Without further ado, let's get into the baseline. Right off the bat, we have what I'll call suboptimal numbers. Even on low, we can't hit an average of 30 FPS, and Ultra can barely even manage 14. On top of that, stuttering is pretty severe, with low being the only preset to manage a double digit 0.1% low. We clearly have our work cut out for us, so let's find the bottlenecks. First up is CPU load, which is definitely high. The low and medium presets have an average load of about 85%, whereas high and ultra have a much lower load. This suggests that the CPU is the bottleneck on lower settings, and the GPU is the bottleneck on the higher settings. Speaking of the GPU, we can clearly see here that I was right on with my guess. While low and medium hover around the 85-90% to 90 utilization mark, the higher presets basically max it out during the majority of the test. Two things are interesting to note here. First, the downward spikes in the last half of the test seem to be universal. When looking at the footage, we can see that the first of these occurs during a really bad stutter when approaching the tram from the bar area, and it happens every single time. The second of the stutters occurs when stopping next to the tram, where you can see the performance absolutely tank while the game tries to swap old assets out prior to boarding. The second thing to note is that neither the CPU or GPU are being fully utilized during the duration of the test on low or medium settings, despite the horrible performance. This made me think that there must be a memory bottleneck on the lower settings, so let's check it out. 
looking at the memory usage, we can see that the deck is throwing basically everything it has at Starfield. Between 13 and 14 gigabytes of memory used here, it's pretty clear that the GPU won't have anywhere near the memory it needs, which explains the stutters. Fortunately for us, this means that either the swap resize and cry utilities or increasing the VRAM could be a viable candidate for improvement, so I'm excited to check those out in a bit. As we can see, the performance here in Starfield is just bad, so we're going to focus on the low and medium presets during the bulk of the testing. Then, use what we learned to maximize gains on higher settings later. Lastly, before moving on, the next few tweaks will be adjusting the minimum VRAM or UMA frame buffer, and using cryo utilities too. If you don't know what either of those are, I highly recommend checking out the video on screen now and in the description below after this one is done, and you'll see why over the next few minutes. Alright, let's get back to the testing. First up is 4GB of VRAM, which we can see doesn't do much for averages, but increases the 97th percentile by 6% and 4% for low and medium respectively. The lows on the low preset are actually 2 FPS lower with the 4GB of VRAM and within a single frame on medium. Overall, 4GB of VRAM is a bit of a wash on its own, but we'll see why we covered it in a bit. Next up is adding Cryo Utility 2's recommended settings into the mix, which we can see brings us our first gains. Paired with the 4GB of minimum VRAM, we see a 3% and 5% boost to both averages and 97th percentile results, as well as a minor boost to 0.1% lows on both presets. It's not a huge difference, but just these two small changes would let us lock to 30fps more consistently in busy scenes, so it's a welcome difference all the same. As these are our best results, we'll use them as a baseline going forward. The next thing I wanted to try is the Steam Deck Essentials mod, which does everything from compress the textures to fit into the Steam Deck's VRAM, to change the frame rate of the in-game animations for a more fluid experience. Installation is pretty simple and can be done completely on the deck. All you need to do is to go to the Nexus page, linked on screen and in the description below, then download all three files on the Files page. From there, start with the textures file and follow the instructions in the README inside. At the time of recording, I simply had to move the files in the Starfield directory folder to the Starfield installation folder, and the files in the documents folder to the location on screen now. Note that all relevant locations are listed in the README, so don't hesitate to read it and copy and paste the relevant paths. Next, do the same for the INI tweaks file you downloaded. In these upcoming tests, I use the ultra performance option. Then lastly, do the same for the animations file. After all three are installed, you just need to do one more thing, which is to delete the existing shader cache for Starfield. To do so, just go to the folder on screen now, and delete everything in there. Don't worry, nothing is really lost here since it only contains the shaders that Valve built. Your save games are safe. And with that, you've installed the mod completely. Here we can see why we went through all the trouble. While the visual quality of the game definitely takes a hit, it performs much better. The averages increased by 25% and 38%, while the 97th percentile results increased by 18 and 31% for low and medium respectively. Despite that, the lows barely budged, clearly signifying that loading stutter is a major problem with Starfield, no matter the assets used. With these much better results, let's search for some new bottlenecks. The CPU load looks identical, so nothing here. But the GPU load is much lower with the mod active, clearly showing that it's doing its job and making Starfield much easier to run. On that note, the GPU power consumption lowered drastically, sometimes more than 60%. I also wanted to test the INI option marked quality since the visual hit was pretty severe on ultra performance. Fortunately, even using the much nicer looking quality option, we have still retained a large amount of our performance gains, so we'll have to keep it in mind for later. As a quick note, I'll be removing the CU2 and 4GB of VRAM labels from graphs for the remainder of testing. They were still used, but I want to keep the graphs readable. Going back to the performance INI, seeing the loading lag spikes, I thought that they might be caused by the dynamic resolution scaling feature, so I tried disabling it. To my surprise, not only did the averages and 97th percentile results rise, but even the lows on the low preset. 
I don't have any definitive proof of this, but I believe that the scaling is actually a pretty costly process and doesn't help us when using the mod, as most textures are already very small. From here on out, these results are the new baseline. Next up, I wanted to see if disabling temporal anti-aliasing, or TAA, would help with either frame rates or the fuzziness in the image. You can disable TAA by editing your Starfield custom.ini in the Documents folder that we extracted to earlier, and then adding the following text under the display heading. I would really like this toggle to be in game, since I don't like how fuzzy TAA makes the image, but this will have to suffice for now. Performance was a mixed bag, with low getting worse lows and medium getting slightly better lows. That said, if you hate the soft edges that TAA gives, then this change is amazing. Next up is overclock testing, and a reminder that I'm running at 4GHz on CPU, 2GHz on GPU, and a wattage of 20. Overclocking results were definitely better than stock, but not as high as I'd hoped, which really goes to show how much computer you need to get a single frame out of Starfield. In this case, we saw averages increase by 3% and 4%, and the 97th percentile results increased by 1% and 2%. The lows on the medium preset increased by 17% and 15%, but the lows on the low preset were nearly identical. To recap our video thus far, we were able to increase the average performance by 26% on the low preset, and a huge 46% on the medium preset. Unfortunately, the lows just don't budge and there doesn't seem to be anything to be done aside from a game update, but I'm very happy with the average and 97th percentile gains. Looking at the high and ultra presets, we can see that even the lows were improved significantly. The high preset more than doubled average frame rate and 97th percentile, while the lows improved by 45% and 34%. The Ultra preset also doubled the averages in 97th percentile and increased lows by 51 and 35%. As a final illustration of how much performance we were able to gain, here's the high preset running better than low did without any tweaks. Overall, I'm very happy with the performance we were able to gain here, and my only wish is that Bethesda would fix the stuttering present during asset swaps. Before I go to the settings section, here are some other things that I tried. The only thing to note is that there won't be any overclocked profiles here today, since we saw very minor gains even with a major overclock. Aside from that, there will be four options to choose from, so let's get right into it. First up is the performance preset, where we prioritize getting as many frames as possible regardless of visual quality. If you want to go as fast as Bethesda did while backstepping away from Fallout 76, then use these settings. Second is Battery Saver, where we try to limit the power drain so you can play away from an outlet for as long as possible. If you want your battery to last longer than the Starfield menu animations, use these settings. Third is quality, where we strive to get the best quality possible on the deck. If you want to experience the universe in its full NASA punk glory, then use these settings. Fourth, and last, is docked, where we set the resolution to 1080p and push the deck to make the best docked experience possible. If you want to share your adventures on the big screen, or maybe a portable projector, use these settings. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. As always, don't forget to like the video, like Barrett likes chunks. Comment on whether you think Starfield just works, or if it's another mod framework put out by Bethesda. 
subscribe to the Church of God Howard and gaze at his almighty holiness. And ring the bell to be alerted when I post my next video. This isn't a joke, I just want you to know when it goes live. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons, YouTube members, and super thanks for the amazing support. It has literally kept me fed this last month, and I cannot say enough kind words about all of you. On another note, it was very refreshing being able to work on another deck dive after all this time, and I look forward to doing some more soon. As for what's next, over the coming weeks, I'd expect some highly anticipated videos. And with that teaser, I'd like to say thank you all for watching, and have a great day.